the uh, finale to this uh, this magnificent symphony and uh, uh, please give us your name and, and if you could be brief with what your issue is. My name is Frank Oliveira. I'm with the Citizens for California High Speed Rail Accountability. I've been listening to this committee meet today. You started the meeting with a mission, which made sense. It, a mission to provide dependable, safe passenger service to get people off the highways, to move people efficiently, effectively around the state. That's achievable. That's actually what the public wants. And it's, it's good that this is happening. What I also heard today was the JPAs. There are JPAs that have been, been formed to pr deliver those services. All of, them had, all of them are ready, willing, and able. Uh, all of them want to provide the, that for that mission. What I also heard from the JPAs is that they don't have any money to do this. And infrastructure funding, capital funding, is sketchy. $50 million doesn't go very far. To bring these, these real achievable goals to passenger service, double tracking needs to be done. The problem is high-speed rail, and that's where we come to high-speed rail, is sucking the life out of infrastructure funding. High-speed rail is a victim of bad planning, not a bad idea, but bad planning. They're pushed by a 2017 date to spend federal funds. It's causing them to move too fast and plan poorly and develop a system which will be a rock around the passenger train's neck. Ultimately, they won't meet their deadline because of the planning that they're doing. Core challenges have already determined that they are not building the project as de designed in 2008. Further court action will continue to do that. And $2.4 billion of federal funds is at risk that have to be spent before October 2017. So I ask you, why wouldn't somebody in this committee suggest that the federal era funds be redirected to the JPAs to bring these needed capital improvements that would bring immediate jobs, that would bring immediate relief to, the, to traffic on highways? would move people around efficiently, would restore people's faith in the state's ability to deliver services, would give people jobs, would help with greenhouse gas, decades earlier than high-speed rail. What this would do would simply give high-speed rail the, the time to plan better, to develop a 220 mile an hour service along I-5 that would meet the achievable goals of moving people from bay to basin on the, on the JPAs, they could be increased to a speed of 110 to 125 if the tracks were double-tracked, which would provide the jobs and the grade crossings and the things that everybody says is needed. With that, that's all I have for you today. I, I would suggest uh, that you make those inquiries down at the governor's office. Uh, obviously, the governor is very committed to this project. This committee is actually looking at other avenues, not necessarily inclusive of high-speed rail, not necessarily exclusive. The focus of this committee is to address the issue of commuter and passenger uh, in inner city rail, uh, and I suspect there is enough discussion on all these issues that we could be doing this 24-7. Uh, so I. Uh, appreciate your comments. You are definitely not alone in your perspective, and I think this is a worthy discussion to continue having. So I want to thank, thank you for your comments, Senator Galgiani. Any final words, or are we all set to adjourn? Um, I, I would like to comment that um, with regard to high-speed rail planning, the focus is to work directly with passenger rail and build, ex build new track in some places and connect with existing track in other places. And in particular in Northern California, we have the opportunity to take advantage of the ability to connect to job centers in the Silicon Valley and the Bay Area once the test track in the Central Valley is complete. We have the ACE system, the Altamont 
commuter express that runs from San Joaquin County into uh, Santa Clara. And at Santa Clara, you can get a, get a, walk across a platform and get onto the Caltrain system that connects into San Francisco. The Caltrain system received $660 million from Prop 1A uh, to electrify their track. And the vision is that um, in the near future, passengers would be able to ride from the Central Valley, connect with the Altamont Commuter Express passenger rail system, and then connect with the Caltrain system into San Francisco. And that's a way of taking advantage of existing um, high-speed rail bond dollars and the $950 million that is included for passenger and inner city rail in Prop 1A so that we further both passenger rail and high-speed rail at the same time. All right. Thank you. Um, this is a discussion clearly that uh, deserves to be and needs to be continued and we will do so. Thank you all for being here and participating uh, today. This is really just the beginning of the conversation, but one that's clearly critically important. So thank you again for your attendance. We are adjourned. <laughs>